Um, here I traced out the tang on some purple heart that I'm going to be using for the scales. It's a nice hard wood and usually turns out pretty good looking. Back over at the grinder, going to be doing some cleanup work. So I'm changing out the belt to a belt that's a little bit more appropriate for just finishing stuff. So I believe we put a, a 120 or so on there for this process. I'm getting that tracked in nice there on, on the Grizzly. I'm going to go ahead and use the shelf here to get nice even passes with the blade. So you can see uh, up here I'm kind of using the slack belt just to clean up the edges. As I mentioned in another video, the only part you want sharp is the edge and the tip. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of knock off any of the lines that hit on the spine to round them just a little bit. Uh, and get that nice smooth feel to it. It also adds to the professionalism of the look of the blade. So stopping frequently to check your work, making sure it's even and it's doing what you want it to do. Uh, also, what this does is it allows the blade to cool down a little bit, not get too hot. Um, every so often, you'll see me go off screen for a moment to just cool it off in some water before I get back on here and make sure I'm getting the, uh, the shape I want. Believe it or not, this is a pared down video. You do spend a lot of time getting that shape that you want here. Uh, if you don't forge it that way, you have to finish it in this way. And when you're taking your time, do you match a blade like I was trying to get as close to the becker as I could? Uh, I needed to take my time on this. Pro tip, nobody ever told me and figured out on my own and watching things on TV like Forge and Fire uh, is using the contact wheel. You know, you don't have to just use the platen. Use the wheels that you have as well. Not only can it change the scratch pattern so you can see what direction or where you might need to continue to uh, develop your blade, it allows you to hit angles that you can't on a straight cross surface. A little bit more spine cleanup here wasn't quite happy with what I was seeing and then I've got that false edge too that I'm trying to get the point pointier uh, false edges are great for that and it also makes the knife look pretty cool in my opinion Hey look, I'm still grinding. Make sure you have a place for those sparks to go too. I've got a magnet down there and a five gallon bucket under me. Uh, and you know, I may or may not have set that table on fire once or twice. Just giving a little different perspective here of what's going on or what you're seeing with the sparks when you're looking at it from first person. Uh, you can see here I'm just kind of working on the edge a little bit, 
trying to get that shape down to sharp. Time to heat this bad boy up and get ready to put my maker's mark on it, the famous panda bear stamp. I always try to key eye when I strike the stamp, part of my martial arts background. I feel like it helps transfer some of your energy into the work and the blade. Flipping it over here, you have to kind of counter what you did with the stamping action. I did strike it pretty hard with a three pound hammer. Uh, you want that thing to last, so I gotta then correct by flipping it over and giving it a couple of taps. Here's a close up of the panda stamp right after it's done, designed by my lovely wife. This is the opportunity you need to take to just kind of get everything as straight as you can by eyeballing it. I'm also going to clean up the steel here. I'm getting ready to start my three thermocycles, and I want to set myself up for success so I can immediately quench after the thermocycles. So this is the thermocycling process. It's up to critical temperature, which you could quench it at. You can see the glow of the blade. And basically you're moving it back and forth so you can change the air around the blade so it doesn't get stagnant in one spot. And I'm gonna be swinging this like this until it's gray. So you do that at least three times to change the molecular structure of the steel before you quench it. Uh, you'll also notice in a bit as it starts to cool off a little more, I'm going to start using some of the shadows in the forge to make sure there is no more red in the blade before I bring it back up to critical again and continue the thermocycle process. Still swinging, making sure there's no more red in the blade at all. And then I'm going to start checking a couple of different areas here to just, you know, use those shadows and see is there any more or is it cooled to gray. Here we go, prepping for the quench, also known as the birth of the blade. Checking it magnetic, putting it in, and then I'm going to be moving it back and forth again so it doesn't stay hot in one spot the oil allows to move around it to actually give me that proper quench and heat treat that we're looking for that is oil uh, i'm just using standard canola i know a lot of guys use parks 50 but this is what i got This is the time when you want to check if it's straight. Uh, you've got a few seconds here or minutes really, maybe not even minutes, but to uh, put it on and some apparatus you may have to get it straight here. I've got a couple of pieces of wood over there that I'm going to put it in between just to kind of press and straighten it out. It looked pretty straight to me. I did see a little bit of a kick in there and I'm trying to get that out just by pressing it between two blocks here. I was pretty happy with the straightening process here. Uh, it's still too hot to touch, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the oil and just finish it cooling off there.
Uh, here it is after the quench. Here it is wiped down and ready for the temper. So we're going to go ahead and turn the tempering oven on to 350. We're going to do two two-hour cycles with this. I don't know who let that guy in here, but anyway. Um, here's some purple heart I have that's epoxied to some leather that we're going to use for some spacing also to help with the shock absorbing for the testing we're going to do. What I went ahead and did was you uh, mix it up on this plate, and I'm using the G Flex product that you can see here. It's about a seven hour cure time, but it's pretty awesome. You may have seen holes in tangs before. What I'm gonna end up doing here uh, is gonna, I'm gonna drill some holes through this leather. It's so thick. What I wanna do is make sure that I can get just to the wood itself. And by putting these holes here, what that's gonna allow is the epoxy that I'm gonna use to not only bond to and through the leather but also hold the steel to the leather and by proxy to the purple heart itself As it's a little bit raised, I went ahead and put it on a sanding belt for a minute just to get those flattened down. Uh, and then there's the purple heart side, which I pre-shaped. Went ahead and moved over to the bandsaw. What I'm doing here is just trimming off that excess leather, trying to save myself a little bit of time for when I do glue this onto the knife. Uh, I don't want to have to get too much time grinding these uh, little small intricate shapes with the wood. I just want to make sure I can get it as close to finished as possible. That way I can make the handle the shape I want and comfortable for the person's hand. Here it is all glued up on the knife. And uh, you know, one thing I can tell you is you don't have, you never have enough clamps in your shop. Get more clamps. There's the G-Flex again I'm showing there. That's the product I'm using. Uh, I did let this cure for about 24 hours before I came back out to mess with it again. It is not five minute epoxy, so you know I wasn't in any hurry anyway. I just wanted to get it done in a way that would be lasting. Ooh, doggy, that's pretty if I don't say so myself. Uh, I blued that blade. I ended up using some super blue for it. Follow the directions. Uh, nice purple heart there with some brass pins, and you can see the skull crusher on the back. I really like the way the blue turned out. Uh, I'm super happy with the uh, knife up to this point. Can't wait to see the testing. Here's a couple pictures again of that final product, and I'm going to show you the edge here in a minute. Uh, stay tuned for the testing. Please subscribe if you're not already, and uh, thanks again.